Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 3, Adding Geometric and Dimensional Constraint to Sketches. This video is supplemented by the given PowerPoint. The basic principle of using constraints in a sketch is to restrict its freedom to move or change size in order to make it more stable. A sketch is said to be under constraint if the constraints are not properly defined. A sketch is fully constrained if all the needed constraints are well defined. And it is over constrained if additional or non necessary constraints were defined or they are redundant. In order to show how to properly constrain on a sketch, we're going to deactivate automatic features. The following steps need to be always done before you start on a sketch unless the instructor indicates otherwise. Go to the main menu. Preferences and a sketch. Make sure to deactivate creating first constraints and continuous auto dimensioning. Then press OK. Now that we have removed the automated features, let's learn how to constrain on a sketch. Open one of the given files as lecture 3, part 1. Now let's modify the sketch by double clicking on it. Notice that it requires 17 constraints. We're going to start with dimensional constraints. Dimensional constraints would allow the size to be fixed for specific features. We have linear, radial, or angular dimensioning. Let's just start with linear dimensioning. You select it, you select the line that you would like to fix, and notice that you have a selection to be inferred meaning that you could do either point-to-point, -point, horizontal, or vertical. If it says infer, means that X an X is going to try to guess the choices that you want. If you don't want an X to guess, simply specify what is the choice. You want horizontal, then select it, and select horizontal. Let's see, now you want vertical, select the line, and make it vertical. Let's follow the process so we constrain all the lines. If you make a wrong selection, simply undo and it will allow you to select again. At this moment, we are done with the linear dimensioning. So now we're going to try to dimension the arc at the top. Notice that by adding the dimensions, the number of constraints needed has been reduced. We need to now add geometrical constraints, which allow the user to relate the sketch entities by using standard operations such as collinearity, concentricity, tangency, and many others. This list shows the icons and the names of the geometrical constraints available in an X. For the time being, avoid using fixed, fully fixed, and point on the curve. Let's now see how these constraints are implemented. In order to know what geometrical constraints to add, it is important to understand the behavior of each one of the features. For example, if we select this line and drag it, notice how it's not connected to the curve or to the line. Its size remains constant since we already add dimensional constraints to it. If we want to make the endpoints coincident, we need to add geometrical constraints. To do so, go to the geometrical constraint icon, select coincident, and select the endpoints of the features that you want to make coincident. Notice that you select each one of the endpoints and as you do that a blue point is going to be created indicating that the geometrical constraint has been added. Once you are done with the coincident simply press close. Notice that the number of constraints have re been reduced to four. One thing that you would like to do is make 
one of the coin one of the points in your sketch coincident to the origin to make sure that it always remains fixed. Notice that when we did that, the geometrical behavior of the lines have changed. In order to ensure that this line is always vertical and this one is horizontal, we have to add geometrical constraints. Go back again to the geometrical constraints icon, select horizontal and make the line horizontal. And now we're going to make this one vertical. Notice that the sketch is fully constrained. Please keep in mind that there is not a unique way of fully constrained on a sketch. It's basically a give and take between geometrical and dimensional constraints. Please try to fully constrain this sketch using different methods of dimensioning and geometrical constraining. In many instances, the user would like to temporarily remove the geometrical constraints. To do so, go to More and unclick the Display Sketch Constraints. Notice that they have been temporarily hidden. If you want to display them again, simply go to More and click on Display Sketch Constraints again. If you want to see a list of the constraints, simply go to More and Show and Remove Constraints. This will give you a list of the different constraints active on the particular sketch. To find details about it, simply click on the constraint and it will highlight the different curves that are participating in that particular constraint. If you want to remove it, simply click on the constraint and click on Remove Highlight. This is especially useful when you have over-constrained sketches. Let's do another example of how to fully constrain a sketch. To do so, open the given file as Lecture 3, Part 1A. Double click on the sketch. Now we're going to fix this sketch. Notice that it requires 56 different constraints. Let's just start by adding coincident constraints. Go around very carefully and add all the constraints, noticing that the blue line has been added systematically. Also notice that the color of the line is being changing as we add the constraints. Oops. If you made a mistake, simply undo, control Z, and then repeat the changes. This requires time and patience. Notice that our constraints have been reduced to 34. Okay, we're going to use some of the other constraints. We're going to, for example, do the tangency to ensure that these lines are tangent to this curve, this one to this curve, and let's do this one to this, this one to this. Notice as, as we do tangency, a line is created at in top of the blue dot that we had before. Okay. If we look very closely, and we could zoom in here, we could see that the that there is an error over here. If you notice, to fix it, we could do coincident between this point and this one, and notice that it fixed it. So as I said, this is a trial and error process. Okay, now let's do, let's use collinearity. Collinearity will allow two lines to be along the same path. So let's try, for example, make this line collinear to the x-axis and this line collinear to this axis. We are also going to make this line collinear with this other line over here. Let's now make them either horizontal or vertical. Horizontal, 
horizontal horizontal let's do now vertical 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 and vertical okay let's try now to make these two curves concentric meaning that we're gonna share the same center take one curve and make it concentric to the other okay so we're almost there we're gonna make lines to have the same size for example we're gonna take equal length we're gonna make these two lines to be the same length these two lines to be the same length these two lines to be the same length okay now notice that we have a little issue over here apparently I forgot to put tangent in that position so let's fix that and now it's improved let's try now to make the different arcs the same radius so we we'll take this same radius same radius same radius same radius okay now we have applied basically every single geometrical constraint however we still need uh, more constraints so that means that we need to add dimensional constraints and the dimensional constraints for example are going to be what is the size of this curve what is the size of this circle what is the size of this radius okay now we are going to add the size of these lines so we go to linear dimensioning and we're going to go vertical this line and add the vertical for this one and then we're going to do horizontal for this one notice now that this sketch is fully constrained it means that it doesn't require any additional constraints to be properly defined at this moment you could change the dimensional values to meet the requirements of your sketch so for example this could be 70 and you do that simply by double clicking on the dimension if we make this one for example 25 notice that because we already put an equal length between these two lines they will increase in the same way you do that same thing for the radius and once again because we have equal radius you, all of them will change at the same time so in many instances it's better to set up the geometrical constraints first and then change the dimensions so that is easy to manage your sketch Lastly, the inner circle. Now, at this moment, we have fully constrained the sketch. We have provided all the geometrical constraints that we needed, as well as the dimensional constraints. Please, now you try. In many cases, you need to have the value of the distance, a radius, or an angle without having to go to the sketch mode. To do so, go to the Analysis tab select measure distance and you have multiple choices if you want for example the linear distance choose the two points that you would like to measure and notice that it will give you the actual value you could also have things like radiuses or diameter so let's do a radius and it will give you the value in some cases you also want to have the angle between two lines Simply select simple angle, select the two lines, and it will give you the measurement of the angle. In many cases, the user does not know the exact value of a given dimension. So NX has a tool that allows the user to change the value of a dimension and animate it with a given range. To show this feature, we're going to open Lecture 3, Part 2, and we're going to double click in the sketch we're going to animate p8 
To access it, we're going to go to the main menu, go to Tools, and Sketch Constraints, and then select Animate Dimension. We're going to select the dimension that we would like to change, and then we're going to provide the range. See, we're going to change it from like 20 to 60. And we're going to change, let's see, every two. We're going to press OK. And now you're going to see how the feature changes depending on the steps that we provide. Once you're happy with your animation and see how it changes, you could press Escape to get out of the animation. This is the end of lecture three, adding geometrical and dimensional constraints to sketches. Make sure to complete all the required quizzes, review all the material given in the PowerPoint and chapter three from your textbook, and be ready to start class assignments.